OnePlus has a little something to be worried about. I, a little. To start things off at the ending, this mid-range territory is probably the most exciting area of smartphone manufacturing, right on or just stepping over that border between something more wallet-friendly and top tier premium flagships. It's always been a fun conversation, or, or sometimes an infuriating debate, that nuance between the mentality of, I would buy this phone if it outperformed my favorite flagship and only cost half the price, against someone who's more in the, why would I spend $1,000 on something that struggles to outperform a $600 phone in any meaningful fashion camp. A main focus for examining the View 20 for me, however, hasn't been stacking it up against an iPhone, Galaxy, Pixel, LG, etc. Instead, seeing if we have any notable improvements over the Honor View 10. It's a significant departure from the dual camera era of Honor phones. You know, the stuff that we've seen since the Honor 8. That kind of dual camera performance is a good idea. I mean, we do actually see OnePlus sort of using a similar image processing technique today, sort of. This is the conclusion of my review, and that's where this phone succeeds. That's where this stuff is still exciting to talk about. It's always worth repeating. There is no such thing as a perfect camera, and all phones are a combination of pros and cons. All phones. Honor has taken great strides in addressing many of my concerns with last year's Honor View, while also maintaining a contrasty aesthetic in their image processing. My first experience with this new half-inch megapixel dense sensor, and it's a great argument for more competition. Trading larger pixels for more sensor surface area and some fun image processing tricks. Still punches well above the price tag, even in ultra low light conditions where we might have been concerned about a lack of image stabilization hardware. Textured, structured, sometimes a little noisy or grainy, but there's a photographic visual feel and aesthetic which I find very appealing. And video has also significantly improved over the previous generation with software stabilization on tap. Though it still seems Honor has some ground to make up against competitors. This whole setup comes with a significant amount of software processing but some of my main complaints with the UI have gotten worse, not better. Increasingly, this is a mess of navigating features, modes, and settings to that end. And for some terrific improvements, I still need to lean back on a retread final analysis. The View 20 is an impossible camera to sum up in a week's use. Even for the casual auto mode shooter, there's a steeper learning curve here than on other devices. It's tough to get a feel for it if you're just gonna pop it out of the box and you know, walk outside and snap a couple test pics. You kind of need to live with it for a bit. But if you do take that time, I think you'll be well rewarded. You want to see how I came to this conclusion? Of course you do. Why else would you be here? Always better when a reviewer shows their work. As mentioned, this is a unique sensor to test, a step away from the zeitgeist of 12 megapixel larger pixel sensors found on most expensive flagships. This is a larger overall surface area with four times the number of pixels. It's not really intended to be a 48 megapixel output machine, however. Uh, binning and combining dots brings us back down to a 12 megapixel shareable image. The hypothesis that this will lead to a light and clarity advantage for JPEGs after processing, and we should have a bit more range for zooming, akin to older, higher resolution Lumia devices. There is also a 3D secondary camera, but I'll be saving that analysis for a separate video. At MWC, Honor just announced a whole suite of new software that's supposed to take advantage of this extra hardware, and those updates have not yet reached my review device. The front camera is also notable for including a high resolution sensor. Whether that delivers a real advantage, well, uh, you'll just have to watch later into this review. I'm kicking things off with exposure and saturation more than anything else, I'm just so happy to see Honor maintaining that contrastier, edgier look for their images. What's blown me away on matched focal length cameras since the P9 is that bump to sharpness, clarity, and contrast over single lens solutions.